Hey out there family, welcome to another Kevin Strong Show. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about how the wealthy uses credit cards. But before we go over that article, we're gonna talk about some pros and cons of using credit cards. It could be a blessing or it can be a curse. It actually has a lot to do with your mindset and your financial status. In my humble opinion, a lot of times those people who have achieved some type of financial independence, have an emergency fund, have all the primary financial uh, check boxes, so to speak, they don't get fixated on credit cards as much. It's normally the person who's striving for credit, thinking that that's going to be the answer to their problems. And the answer to their problems is getting a budget and following a systematic budget on a monthly basis. So if you're new to the show, welcome. Start off by hitting that bell notification, hitting the like button and consider leaving a comment. So without further ado, before we actually get into the article about how rich Americans use credit cards, let's briefly talk about some potential pros and cons of using credit cards. In my humble opinion, I think one of the benefits of using a credit card, it's convenience, right? I think it's easy to pull out a credit card to buy what you want when you want it. It doesn't get much easier than buying online, let's say with a merchant or some type of platform that already has your information stored. But obviously you have to be careful with that with so much fraud and scams that are going on online. Consumer protection. Some of you may not be aware of this, but if your credit card, if you use your credit card, you know, basically to buy a product or service and it turns out to be, let's say, unsatis unsatisfactory or was falsely advertised or never arrived on time, you can dispute that charge and more than likely your credit card uh, issuer is going to issue you a credit pending the outcome of that uh, investigation. But normally you'll see a credit to your statement within seven to 10 business days from the time you file that dispute um, online. Uh, there's also the potential of free financing if you are in the market for, let's say, balance transfers. You know, some of these credit cards out here, folks, offer a 0% interest rate for, uh, let's say, an introductory period, giving you several months and sometimes over a year to pay off purchases without getting hit with any type of interest. Uh, what else could be a benefit? Travel perks and reservations. You know, if you ever try to get plane tickets or reserve a hotel room without a credit card, it can be done, but it's not really easy. They will typically require a higher deposit held on a debit card than a credit card. And depending upon how much money you have in the bank, that can really kind of restrict uh, your, your, you know, how much funds you have available to use in a checking account if that is tied to like a debit card. Rewards, you know, some people like cash back. That's basically what I use mine for. Uh, sometimes I'll buy, like years ago, I would, you know, use my credit card for almost everything, accumulate a lot of points. Instead of taking the cash or applying that credit to my statement, I would ask them to send me a check. I would cash the check and then buy silver with it. So that's just one thing. Easy record keeping, right? A lot of these, uh, I know American Express is good for putting some of your spending habits and compartmentalizing those into certain sections saying, hey, these are groceries, this is entertainment, this is business, things of that nature. Obviously, it helps you build credit provided that you are paying your bill on time. So enough of the pro or pros. Let's look at some cons. I think the risk of overspending, the ease and let's say convenience of using a credit card is precisely why it is so easy and perhaps tempting to overspend. The fact that it's not hitting your account directly, it almost gives you a false sense of security that you have more than what you potentially do. And as a result of that, that could lead to what? Debt, right? Because credit cards allow you to spend more than your budget will accommodate. I think you can end up paying significant interest while making little progress on repaying the credit card debt. And you've seen all of those things online and on TV saying, if you make the minimum payment on a $10,000 or a $5,000 credit card balance, how many years, not months, how many years it takes in order to pay that off? Variable interest rate. So often, 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 um, I shouldn't say often, often, mostly 99.999% of the time, you're not going to have a fixed rate, the variable rate card. So unless you're paying your balance off in full, uh, you could be hit with a lot of interest and that can change uh, periodically. And obviously fees that are associated with credit cards, that could be a penalty in the event that you end up paying late, right? That can also be reported to the credit bureau, which can have an adverse impact on your 
credit profile. So at the end of the day, you just want to use credit cards responsibly within your budget. But chances are, as I said earlier, if you don't have an emergency fund and there's some other things that you need to take care of, you really shouldn't be using credit. Credit is not necessarily a method to build wealth unless you're using it to facilitate real estate transactions. And there's a lot of real estate, especially in the multifamily space, that they're going to evaluate the property based on the value and the income it's producing, not your personal credit. So it's it's important from a functionality standpoint, but a lot of people in the middle class look at it as a gateway to accumulating wealth. It is not. You know, talk about how much money you're saving. Don't tell me what your FICO score is. So at the end of the day, let's talk about how um, rich Americans use credit cards. Uh, here's a breakdown right here. There's two categories, net worth greater than a million and then net worth less than a million. So as you can see, a big, big component of people using credit, uh, credit cards below and above a million dollars is the cash back. A lot of people use it for travel cards, uh, balance transfers, um, gas and groceries. As you can see here, 0% APR, which was a little uh, surprising for me that people who had net worth over $1 million, 31% are still using it for zero APR. One thing that I deduce from that stat is that if you've got that type of um, net worth, why aren't you paying your cards off? Why do you need a balance transfer? That's probably an indication that you're not managing your money effectively and efficiently. I understand somebody who has less than that, 1 million in net worth, but somebody has over a million and think about it, 31% are still basically jumping on those uh, balance transfer cards, sign up bonus, 27% of people with net worths over a million dollars have a secured card. That was interesting. Student cards and store and band and uh, I'm sorry, store and brand specific rewards, 19 and 13 uh, percent. So millionaires are more likely to have multiple credit cards compared to the average American. I thought this was interesting. So here's the sweet spot. It looks like between two and three. As you can see here, once again, those with a net worth greater than one million, 37 percent have two cards. Those under a million have 25 percent. Under the two card, three cards, you can see that four or more. That. So, this is just a graphic breakdown. How many credit cards do millionaires carry? This is just a graphical breakdown of what we talked about. Rich Americans open new credit cards more frequently than average Americans. This also was surprising. So, look at this once per year or less, net worth greater than 45%. 80% of net worth less than 1%. So once again, this category deals with rich Americans open credit cards more frequently than the average American. Twice a year, look at that. Three times per year, more than three times per year. So this is an interesting bucket because collectively, as this topic suggests, people with a net worth greater than $1 million are using credit cards at a far more greater rate than people who have less than a million dollars. One thing I think you can deduce from that, or hopefully, is that it's just the perks, you know, the travel, the cash back, and things of that nature. A lot of people who have less than a million dollars net worth on average probably have some credit challenges, may not be in a position to take advantage of some of these uh opportunities but this was kind of shocking when i um took a look at it you know, obviously rich americans care less about interest rates more about rewards than the average american so the interest rate here is 26 percent 40 percent rewards you can see more important zero apr window was balanced out annual fees a little bit higher on those with less than a million and all this other stuff is kind of incidental here uh, but I think the top two things here is the rewards and the interest rate categories that kind of jump out in terms of where people are putting um, their interest are. Bank of America and American Express are the most popular credit cards issued among high net worth Americans. So here you are, Bank of America and American Express. And you can see down here, there's Chase, City Bank, Discover, and this credit union is down here. So just kind of an interesting, interesting, interesting um, 
article about the credit cards and how the rich people use credit cards. Like I said at the beginning of the show, ladies and gents, I just think it has a lot to do with mindset because you get to the point where once you have really good credit, you're financially responsible uh, in terms of having an emergency fund, you're living well below your means. When you start getting those credit card offers, you, you don't even look at them. You just kind of look here and you just throw them away, right? So like I said, if you're using them for cash back, that's great. If you're using it for travel, that's great. But if you can't pay the balance off in full, you do what you have to do. But that's probably an indication that you're under financial stress. So once again, you do what you have to do. But it's also, you probably, chances are, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you probably are not sticking to a regiment of a budget based on your income and in your expenses on a monthly basis. So it's important to use credit cards responsibly. I just seen an interesting fact. I didn't know this. I wanted to share this with you before we close out. Did you know Warren Buffett owns more treasury bills than the financial reserve than the Fed? I think he has $234 billion in treasury bills. Warren Buffett owns more T-bills than the Fed. That is an interesting fact to it. So as always, do the responsible thing. Always, always, always try to keep your credit score up and your debt down. If you enjoyed this edition of the Kevin Strong Show, show me some appreciation by hitting the like button, leaving a comment. If you have not subscribed, consider doing so at this time because I typically release my videos on the weekend. Have a great weekend yourself, ladies and gents, and I'll see you in the next one.